In this tutorial, let's see how we can simulate rigid body interactions with cloth using the new RBD Lab tools, especially the Metalsoft module. So here's a simple scene setup. This is a simple cube with the dimensions edited to match uh, something like a cloth. So these are the dimensions. And here's another cube which will be used as a pin for the cloth through constraints. And these are the spheres which are going to be the rigid bodies to interact with the cloth. So let's apply a rotation and scale for all of the objects. And let's start with the cloth. Let's head to RBD Lab and let's head to the fracture module and let's add a standard scatter. Now here instead of our normal random distribution let's choose a grid distribution and here we can change the resolution of the grid let's change it to 30 and click on accept and let's change the max chunks to 900 and then let's reduce the noise to zero and click fracture fracture looks good let's apply the fracture and let's head to the physics module. Let's add ground and toggle the visibility. Let's get to the RBD tab, click on Metal Soft, and add rigid bodies. And let's head to the kinematics tab and let's click on kinematic. Let's not click the update yet. Now let's head to the constraints tab and let's create soft constraints for these fractured chunks now with the source collections selected as cube low and source filter as collections and the type of constraints as soft constraints let's uncheck breakable and let's check iterations and then let's check between chunks and create constraint group so here's the constraint group that was created and under the constraint settings, under limit linear distance, let's toggle these on and limit the distance to 0.1 meter. And the spring angle, let's change the stiffness and reduce it to something like 0.1. And the damping, let's reduce it to something like 0.01. .01. And we're using very low values for the spring angle and the spring linear uh, stiffness and damping because we would like this to behave like a cloth and let's use 0.1 and 0.1 and then click on update and now let's also create constraint so that these edge chunks are pinned now in order to create the constraints between the chunks at the edge to the cube, we have to enable rigid bodies to the cube. So let's select the cube and head to the motion tab and click on set RBD. Now let's change the type from active to passive and then click on kinematic. Now this cube is a passive rigid body. Now Let's head back to the constraints and in top view, let's select the chunks at the edge. And with the selection as a source filter, let's change the type to fixed, uncheck breakable. And let's check on iteration. So we have stronger constraints. And let's click on attach geometry so that we can attach the constraints to this geometry. And let's click on the cube. Now create constraint group. And this is the original soft constraints group. And this is the new constraint group between the chunks at the edge 
to this cube. Now let's play the simulation. And as we can see, the simulation is quite unstable. So let's go to physics and under RBD, rigid body world, let's change the sub steps per frame to 10. And then let's run the simulation again. There we go. That's the cloth simulation. Now, let's say we would like these spheres to interact with the cloth. So let's add rigid bodies to the spheres. Let's head to the motion tab and set RBD. And let's set the type as active and let's increase the mass to 10 kilograms. And let's do the same thing for the other. Now let's play the animation. Looks good. So let's add more details to the simulation. Now let's get to the activators module and let's add activators to the spheres so that these chunks are activated only when the spheres contact the fracture chunks. And let's use uh, kinematics. So let's take all of these chunks. First, let's head to physics and under kinematics, let's click on update. This kinematic settings option doesn't need to have the chunk selected. It actually works on the entire target collection. Since I already have the chunk selected, I just clicked on update. That's it. So that the chunks don't participate in the rigid body simulation. So we have the kinematic option checked and update. Perfect. Now let's head to the activators. Now, with the layer type selected as kinematics and the source as the target collection, we can choose to select the entire scene or a particular target collection. In this case, both are the same because we only have one target collection. So, with the target collection selected and the layer type as kinematics, let's select all of these chunks. And then let's say add layer. Now an activator's layer has been added here. Now let's select all of these spheres and then let's add activator to those spheres. And let's select sphere as the activator. There we go. Now let's head to the activators tab and let's reduce the scale. to match the sphere. And let's decrease the margin from one to something like 0.3 so that only few chunks around these activators are activated here in the beginning. And then since these spheres are not keyframed, we cannot use auto range. So let's uncheck that. And with the sub steps as one, as the speed of these spheres is not too much, one should be sufficient. And for the frames, let's give it 100 frames as the simulation should be completed within 100 frames. And use single activation because we want the chunks to be activated and then stay activated. Looks good. So let's record the keyframes. All right, let's take a look. There we go. So only these chunks are activated. And that's why we reduce the margin from one to 0 0.3. Looks good. All right. And then let's say at frame 40, we want the rest of the chunks to be activated as well. Now, the way we can do that is by adding another activator. Since we already recorded the keyframes for these activators. Let's deselect all of these and let's add another activator for the same layer. 
and this time let's add a cube activator and here's the cube and let's scale it down in the z direction and scale it a bit in the xy plane and then let's bring it up a bit so at frame 40 let's say this is the location for the activator and let's say at frame 44 let's move it down a bit and record a keyframe for the location and interpolation mode let's change to linear and now we can use auto range and let's keep the margin at 0 0.3 and use single activation now when we hit record this records this additional activator as well and the previous keyframes are preserved record all right let's take a look as soon as it reaches frame 40 this activator should start activating the rest of the chunks which is what we want now let's add one more interesting step let's say at frame 100 we would like this entire cloth to tilt around the x-axis in this direction the way we can do that is by keyframing the rotation for this cube because the edge chunks are, are already pinned as constraints to this cube. Let's go to frame 100 and let's insert a rotation keyframe. And let's say at frame 160, let's rotate this on the x axis by 20 degrees and press. I to insert a rotation keyframe. Looks good. Now, in order for us to see the simulation close to real time, let's bake the simulation to 250 frames. Let's take a look at the simulation. Looks good. Perfect. That's what we were looking for. All right, now let's head to the Metal Soft module. And under Metal Creation tab, let's create Mesh Deform, which is going to bind the original geometry for this cloth to the fracture chunks. Cool. But as we can see, there's not much geometry for the cloth to deform. So let's add a few control loops. And let's rebind as we change the geometry. And let's add modifier. Let's add subsurf modifier to add more geometry to it and let's increase the subsurface levels to three and then update modifiers there we go let's hide all the activators let's get to the activators module and let's hide all the activators. There we go. Now let's head to the mesh visualization options and then pretty shading on. And let's hide this cube and let's take a look. This looks good. However, 
if we see any intersecting geometry for the cloth, we can do an additional step of adding a displace modifier under metal soft. Right here, under modify layers, we can add a displace modifier. Click OK. And then we can reduce the strength to something like 0 0.01. Update modifiers. In this case, we don't see any intersecting geometries yet. But if we see any intersecting geometries, we have this option where we can do that. In order to improve the accuracy of the simulation, we can actually head to the physics module and increase the substeps per frame from 10 to 20 and the solver iterations from 10 to 20. And then let's play the animation. So now we don't see any intersection between the spheres to the cloth. The cloth is interacting much more accurately with the spheres. So that's how we can simulate rigid body interactions with cloth using the new RBD Lab tools. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you and stay tuned for more tutorials.